Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about intervals of change in a function which come into three categories. We're either constant, so there is no change, we're increasing or decreasing, or the third type is being a concave up shape or a concave down shape. So this is a graph that we're going to talk about just kind of just generally about some of these terms. A zero is wherever we're touching the x-axis, so here, here, and here. The black line is my function. The y-intercept is wherever we're touching the y-axis. Uh, we should only ever have one y-intercept, but we can have multiple uh, x-intercepts. The average rate of change is where the graph is either increasing or decreasing. So this red line is where we are increasing. So on this part of the function, we are going up, as well as this part of the function, we are going up. But then the average rate of change could be decreasing across this curve. This is an area where as we go across, the curve is going down. I'm just trying to highlight different parts where we're either going up or going down. Concavity is separate from either increasing or decreasing because uh, concave up is where we are getting a bigger and bigger average rate of change as we go along. We start out with this negative average rate of change. Now it's a positive average rate of change. Then here, we our average rate of change is getting smaller. Uh, we have a positive average rate of change. It's become zero, and now it's negative for our average rate of change. So this is concave down. Uh, it doesn't have it anywhere on this graph, but if we ever have horizontal lines, it will be a constant uh, slope or the, the graph is neither increasing or decreasing, concave up or concave down. We are just constant. Again, highlighting those different types of changes, this would be an example of being concave up and increasing, but increasing can also be concave down. This is increasing, but has that kind of concave down shape. If you take these two concaves down, think about like a cup of water pouring out onto a table, but a concave up shape should be able to hold water inside of it. So these two are concave up. One is increasing, one is decreasing. Um, because there's not a connection between if you're decreasing, you're always going to be concave down. No, if you're decreasing, you can be concave up or concave down. So in a theory, let's take a look at a graph. We're always going to talk about these intervals in terms of their x values. So we're looking for where we're concave up. So we're going to look at these x values here. They're letters, but that works the same as if they were numbers. We are looking for this concave up area because that's that cup that could be holding water. We've also got that cup that could be holding water here. But between I and K, we are not able to like hold water in there. We just kind of like spill out into those other two areas. So we are having that concave up from negative infinity to I. We go to negative infinity because we got that arrow that keeps going in that direction. Same thing with K is going to positive infinity because this keeps going in that direction. But concave down is this middle piece right here. That is where it is like that cup of water being pouring out. So that I to K is where uh, we are concave down because it's making that pouring out shape. Our zeros of our function, rather than being intervals, are just these points. Zeros are where we cross the x-axis. Zeros and x-intercepts mean the same thing. So G and M, so x equals G and x equals M are our two places where we touch the x-axis. Our y-intercept, we should only ever get one of those, is right here, our f of 0 being a. When we have an x value of 0, that is where we touch the y-axis. So that is our y-intercept. Now, remember, in terms of increasing and decreasing, that's not the same as concave up and concave down. When it's increasing, that's when this graph is going up. Right here, we're going down, so we don't want that. We want from H to J because that's where we're going up, as well as from L to positive infinity because all of this stuff is going up. So our intervals of increasing is from H to J. Again, we're talking about it in terms of those X values. Here's where we're going up and L to infinity. That's also where we're going up. Where we're decreasing is going to be opposite of that. So right here, we're going down, so we want that. We don't want from H to J, and we want from J to L because that's the other interval where we're going down. 
In this example, we want to look for where we are concave up and concave down. When we talk about these intervals, we want to talk about these intervals in terms of those x values. So being concave up, we're looking for that upper thing that can like hold a cup of water. Um, I can see a good cup of water right here. This looks kind of like it would hold water, but it's not curved like this is, so this wouldn't count. It looks similar to it, but it's straight lines. So that is not a concave thing. Concavity should be kind of that curved shape. So we are concave up from negative infinity to negative one. I put a parenthesis on negative one because I've got like an open circle there. I'm not gonna come after you about like the brackets or parentheses on these intervals for increasing and decreasing and concave up and concave down. We need calculus to know which one is which. And so I'm not gonna come after you for it. Where we're gonna be concave down is never, I don't see any areas where we've got that concave down shape, like that cup being pouring out of water. So all of this stuff is concave up. That's not concave down. So there's never a point where we are concave down. We're not guaranteed that concave down and concave up. Our zeros of our function, we've got a zero right here at negative five. Um, we would not include this one at the x value of negative one because there's no actual point there. That open circle means we approach it, but we don't quite touch it. The y-intercept of our function is where we touch the y-axis, so that'll be right here. So at the, at the y value of three. So that's one where we are going to use that y value, but everything else is just in terms of x. Where our graph is increasing, that is where that thing is going up. So we're definitely increasing here. And we're increasing from negative 3 to negative 1. So we would say that there's two chunks we're increasing. Here it's flat. That is a constant area. So it is not increasing. It is not concave. It is just constant. Finally, we're decreasing from negative infinity to negative 3 because all of this stuff is going down, and that's between the x values of negative 3 all the way towards negative infinity, all the way towards the left. That is it for our video on intervals of change. Remember, you're always talking about these intervals in terms of their x values. We don't talk about it in terms of the y values, so we look at that x-axis and we say from where to where are we either increasing or decreasing or concave up or concave down. Remember, too, that increasing and decreasing are not directly connected to concave up and concave down. We can be increasing uh, as a concave up or increasing as a concave down. Same thing with decreasing can be connected separately between concave up and concave down. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.